You ready? Yep. Okay. Come to a complete stop. I'm ready. I'll let this Honda go by. I don't want to scare him. Okay. Ah, you don't want to scare We're not using launch control, which it has. Here we go. Not bad. Oh. Welcome to the Ultimate TFL Buddy Review because we've got the Ultimate TFL Buddy Review car. And if you know anything about key fobs, is it that way, that way, that way, you'll know that we've got a very special car that we'll be reviewing. Tommy, come on over here, buddy. What are we reviewing? We are reviewing the brand new 2020 McLaren 570S Spider. Yep, and in this review, we're gonna take it for a ride. We're gonna find out how it merges onto the highway. We're gonna see how quiet it is or not. And of course, at the end of this review, we're gonna let you know whether you should buy it, lease it, rent it, or forget it. So let's get right to it, Tommy, because this is a cool car. Anytime you're reviewing a car that's over $200,000, <laughs> It makes me a little nervous. Let's start with styling. Yes, I need my white gloves for this one because this is a truly incredible experience. It's one of the best day at work in my entire life. The 570S, gorgeous car. This model is the entry level McLaren. I say that in quotes because entry level just means that this car will do zero to 60 in 3.1 seconds according to the manufacturer. So there's nothing entry level about this model. It is truly an incredible performer and it looks great too. Should I, should I open the hood, Tommy? No, I'm not ready for you to open I'm, the I'm hood. I'm opening the hood. Oh, I open the hood. There you go. Show them the engine. No, of course it's mid-engine. This is the front trunk on the McLaren. Very decent size, actually. I'm, I'm pretty impressed. There's a surprising amount of storage capacity in this Spider. You can see just how deep it goes, almost to uh, the base of the vehicle. So that's pretty cool. And the other thing that's cool about it is the overall design. You've got this very recognizable McLaren logo. You see this semicircle everywhere throughout the vehicle. So for example, in the headlights, the daytime running lights, they make the semicircle. The tail lights make the semicircle. And you get a lot of exposed engineering too. You know what, that's not really a semicircle. It's more of a swoosh. Well, you can't say swoosh. swoosh. That's Nike. It's a, well, if it were a McLaren swoosh. Yeah, semicircle, I'm going with semicircle. Down here in the front, you can see part of the cooling system of the vehicle and there is a lot of it because of the engine in the rear. 3.8 liter twin turbo V8, which we'll talk about in a sec. Let's talk about the wheels. Yep, 19s in the front, 20s in the back, Tommy. These are the optional five twin spoke wheels. This is a stealth finish on these guys. 225, 35 ZR19s in the front. And if we come to the rear, take a look at this. Just like my dad mentioned, significantly wider, a little bit bigger, 285, 35 ZR20s. This one has the yellow painted brake calipers and whoever at McLaren specs this example did a great job because contrasted with the Vega blue finish, the yellow and blue looks fantastic. All right, Tommy, let me show them the engine because, hey dude, uh, where is the door handle? Um, I'm kidding, I know where it's at. It's hidden, if you look, it's right down there. It's a little button you push that opens up the doors in a very, very Lamborghini-esque sort of way, huh? And the other no, thing, the other thing- it's not Lamborghini-esque, it's McLaren-esque. The other thing I need to talk about when we open up the doors is that these air scoops are all functional, right? This actually brings vast amount of air into uh, the back to cool off that engine. And we parked it in our garage the other night and it got so hot that we heated up the garage. The other thing worth mentioning is right here, it's a big old sill. So getting in and out of this car, um, is uh, well a little bit of a gymnastics maneuver but let me show you the engine so i will push the little button that opens up uh the engine right tommy here we go i just did it why don't you show them so you can't actually view the engine in the back of the 570 instead you get a little flap for oil and for water and some emissions and control information there but as a consumer you can't gain access to the twin turbo v8 you can see it through the vents though. I mean, if you look carefully, you can see the routing for the turbos and the exhaust. And when you come toward the back here, a little bit like the P1, do you remember that crazy hypercar? A lot of exposed uh, components back here as well. So for example, the inside of the taillight is hollow with these vents here in the rear diffuser. Tremendous amount of air going along uh, the rear. And then the exhaust tips. That's an option, dude. That is a $500 option. Yeah, if you want your exhaust tips and kind of the stealth finish, it's about 400 and some change. Yeah, but let me show you what this car does, which I think is it's not ultimate, but certainly one of the coolest party tricks. So let me uh, close the door. Seconds, 
Tommy. You can do it at up to 25 miles an hour. Yeah, it's pretty fast. <laughs> extraordinary about that, Tommy, is just how quickly that uh, V8 actually spools up, right? I mean, it's almost like a Formula One car. It just goes right up to five, 6,000 RPMs like that. Yeah, and the red line on this car is extremely high. We're talking 8,000 RPM, and that little engine will still soar. So that's pretty cool stuff. Should we uh, hop in and then take it for a little spin? Heck yeah, I've been dying. Let's go do it. You know, Tommy, I usually don't fit in a lot of sporty cars like this, but I do fit in the McLaren. I'm talking about cars like a Miata I don't fit into, a BRZ, of course they don't compete. Oh my goodness, Miata and BRZ in the same sentence as 570. But I do have one gripe to pick, and that is the location of the seat controls. They're right here, why don't you show them? Well, actually, why don't we do this? I'm gonna go over all the really kind of cool things about the interior and exterior. Yeah. Let's cut to some of that video. This McLaren has a bunch of really cool hidden features that you may not know about until you watch this video. And we're gonna start with the door. My dad mentioned how the door opens, but there's a little hidden rubber pad underneath this louver, and you pull it. You'll notice how cool this door is with all sorts of inserts and arrow bits throughout. So you don't wanna damage it when you close it, but luckily in the McLaren, you don't have to worry about it because simply bring the door up to the jam, and it will latch automatically through the soft closed door feature. You'll notice right now I have the top closed and that's because I want to show you something really cool under this tonneau cover. Check this out. If I push and hold this button here on the door, look at that, the tonneau electronically opens, revealing a large space and you can use this space for additional storage. And then to close the tonneau, I push the other button, push and hold. But this is very important. You never want to open up the convertible top with anything in the tonneau cover area because you will damage the roof. And in fact, when you use the little operation switch for the roof, it will give you a warning saying, make sure there's nothing in the tonneau area or you will damage your roof. To open the door of the McLaren, there is simply a little electronic pull tab. You pull that up and then push the door open. And it really is easy to open because it rides on gas struts. But you're probably wondering, what happens if the battery dies or if there's a fault? Well, there's actually a very graceful leather strap located next to the door that you can pull as a manual release. Adjusting the electronically controlled seats in the McLaren is not what you'd expect because there are no seat controls down here like just about every other car. There's also no seat controls on the door. In fact, the power seat controls are underneath your right knee for the driver and your left knee for the passenger and you really can't see them. You have to just feel and guess how the seat's gonna move. It's a little bit tricky. The McLaren really is a technological tour de force and one of the coolest things about this car is actually this big 10 inch cluster screen. And this is where the suspension lift lives. So I have to cycle over here to the suspension lift, just like that. And there it is, you can see a picture of the car and then I select it by pulling back on the stock and I move the stock up to raise it in the front and that'll allow me to clear some curbs. Now, the start button on the McLaren is down here. Do you want to start it up? Well, it's going to be loud, so just pretend I'm starting it up. Okay. <laughs> yeah, hang on. Take your foot off the exhaust. Okay. I just want to show the media here. So we have two different screens in the McLaren. The main center cluster here is seven inches. The actual instrumentation is 10 inches. You know, you're not going to be able to see that very well in this light. I'm going for it. You're going for I'm it? I'm going for it, yep. And it's operated all via touchscreen. It's portrait mode, which is interesting. Yeah. You know, it's not horizontal, it's mounted vertically. Uh, no tune knob, but you are able to tune with your finger. And overall, the interior design is pretty minimalist. I do really like the, uh, the, the vents throughout the interior. You've got four of them across the dash. Plus, remember how we talked about those yellow brake calipers? Yep. The yellow is brought in here throughout the stitching, throughout the actual speaker, really well tied together. All right, well, shall we take it for a ride? Yes, let's but, take it for a ride. But before you do that, why don't you get the Monroni and talk about the fuel economy. I think it's 16, if I recall, uh, in the, uh, is it 16? No. Or, no, it's 18. 15 city, 23 highway, 18 combined, which is pretty good. And our total suggested retail price, 20, 
well, not $23,000, $233,780. How much is the base price? Uh, the Spider starts at two hundred eight eight hundred. dollars Yeah. But if you want the coupe, you can get one for under $200. That's the starting price of the coupe. Now, this has uh, the optional front spoiler chin lift, which I would highly recommend you get because um, the front end of this thing is so darn low that, you know, a pregnant ant will cause it to hit. Yes, compared to... Um, well, just about anything we drive sort of regularly. <laughs> yeah. You gotta adjust your driving habits for sure. Let's talk about some of the options. Let's play Moto Man's options game. Go for it. Yeah, so if you want the ignition key in matte black, how much do you think that costs? I'm gonna go with 50 bucks. $409. <laughs> okay. Yeah, um, if you want a battery charger, lithium ion, how much do you think that would cost? So that if it's sitting a long time because you're not driving it every day. Yeah, the battery will last longer. I'm gonna go with uh, batteries plus that would be like a $100 option. You're close, 230 That's not bad. Yeah, not bad at all. Yep. Uh, the exhaust finisher in stealth, that kind of cool finish on the exhaust. Yeah, I said 500 I was yep. wrong. I 580 think. I wasn't wrong. You were, you were not wrong. The nose lift. Oh, that's going to be at least 500 1600 Oh, ouch. How about the optional five twin spoke lightweight wheel? Whoa. Oh, my. That's going to be expensive. Uh, two and a half thousand. No, 4780 Wow. $4, All right. Well, I did not do well in the options game, unfortunately. So let's talk about the stuff you want to know. Engine yep. and performance. Yep. Horsepower. It's got to be 570 ish, right? Because that's, that's where that comes from. 562. Yep. Torque 443. I think it's horsepower in the you know European slash British way. I think it's brake horsepower. Right, yeah. 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 Um, and then 0 to 60 according to McLaren, 3.1. Now we did not get permission to do instrument testing, so we do not have the solo DL as we're move, moving over to move on to the freeway. Uh, so I can't actually confirm that, but we will do a uh, butt o meter and see how fast it is when we floor it. Okay. All right, how about that? Now we are not, you're gonna put it in sport mode? Yep, I'm in sport. Okay. okay. Whenever you're ready. I'm, all right, all right. I gotta give these guys some room. Right, you ready? Yep. Okay, come to a complete stop. I'm ready. I'll let this Honda go by, I don't wanna scare him. Okay. Ah, you'll not scare We're not him. using launch control, which it has, here we go. Not bad. Oh! <laughs> that doesn't feel so much faster than 3.1. I don't know what that number is. Yeah. Maybe they, they did that like towing 7,000 pounds, but holy crud, that's fast. <laughs> I really enjoyed that. Oh. You know, we are uh, going to give this car uh, to the former Stig on Top Gear USA, yep. who is going to take it around our track. And I'm hoping that it could come close to setting the track record, so be sure to stay tuned for that Hot or Not episode. All right, so we've got the convertible top down. Yep. It's pretty quiet in here. I'm going to turn on my sound meter. Go for it. Mid-70s in the decibel range. Very respectable. And the cool thing is, there's a little window back here. Yep. Oh, nice. Yeah, you can put the little window up and down and make it quieter. If you, uh, get, a little bit of, get a little bit more wind in your hair. Exactly right. Now, should we try the navigation so we see if we can get the snarfs? I don't think it does. It have that? It does. It has voice command. All right, give it a okay, shot. Are you ready? Yeah. I'm going to speak. Yeah, this is not going to go well. Voice command, please. Navi navigate to Snarf's sandwiches. Voice command, please. Navigate to Snarf's sandwiches. Help. You can say, for example, yeah, it voice command, please. Let me, let me please. Maybe I can't hear you on your side. Voice command, please. Navigate. Navigate to Snarf's sandwiches. Voice command, please. Yeah. Did not work. I gotta say, this infotainment system, quite hard to use. Yeah, I mean, if you're buying a McLaren because you want the latest and greatest in uh, infotainment, you're, you're probably buying the wrong car. <laughs> yes, you're absolutely right. But if you are buying a McLaren because you want performance, you are buying the right car. And down here, we've got this little panel, yeah. which will adjust not only the handling, but the engine performance of the vehicle. And I'm gonna go into uh, the, the normal setting because we are coming up to our rough road and let's see how it does on the hula girl test yeah now normally we would uh, we would uh, duct tape the hula girl to the vehicle but this being a two hundred thousand dollar vehicle we're just going to use tommy's hand to do it yep and we're going to see you're how... welcome mclaren yeah this is going to be your comfort score on everyday driving <laughs> uh, and we have to readjust it right i mean this is kind of bordering on 
certainly, maybe not the supercar territory, but close to it. And I guess it could be a supercar, right? It is definitely a supercar. No, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not readjusting. I'm going with my Normal. 10 standard being a 78 Eldorado. So let's see how... Uh... And the more she dances, the worse the road. So here's the bad road that we're on right now. I'm going, for, I'm trying to hit the bad potholes on purpose. What do you think, Tommy? Not bad at all, actually. That's amazing. All right. Uh, I give it, I give it a five. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, that's not bad. The ride in this really bad, if we're being honest. Yeah. It's not a whole lot worse than like a um, uh, a Miata or something. No. I mean, now I'm comparing it to Miata. Yeah, exactly. But the point is, no, is the point is we should compare it to the cars it competes against. Yes, right? it's not all that bad compared to an R8. I don't know. I've never driven an R8. Yeah, so that's what it competes directly competes 911 against. 911 Turbo R8. Yeah, the V10. This model is equipped with a $3,000 interior carbon fiber package, and part of that package is the incredible paddle shifters. And here's how they work. They are attached to the steering wheel, but they move on the same plane. So when I pull the minus to downshift, the upshift paddle moves as well. This is super satisfying. Obviously, it won't let you pull both the plus and the minus at the same time. And that feeling, that little click it gives you, is probably one of the best feelings in the automotive world. Here in the center of the McLaren, you'll notice a couple of interesting things. First of all, the transmission is push button. So when I start the engine, to shift it to drive, put your foot on the brake, hit the D. Reverse, same thing. And then up here, you'll see the drive selectors, but when you turn them, nothing happens. And that's so you don't accidentally put the car in a track mode, for example. So to actually make these switches do something, push the active button, the little circle illuminates, and now I can go to sport and track mode as I see fit. There is no glove box in the McLaren, but there is a surprising amount of storage, and one of the coolest bits of storage, there in the door. You get a deep recess cubby where you can put your valuables and your insurance and registration because you know you're gonna probably need them once or twice in this car. I do like how airy the interior of the McLaren feels, and part of that is this open concept, so you can see there's a flow in between the driver and the passenger seats. And to incorporate the infotainment screen, they put it on this little protrusion, is that the word for it? This little bit that sticks down below this giant cubby. And the actual media system is pretty easy to use. You've got your Sirius XM, your radio controls, even your navigation. And one thing I like about this system is when you go into the, uh, <laughs> the um, climate controls, the little guy that shows you where the air is blowing, has a racing helmet on. The easiest way to get into the front trunk of the McLaren is just to hold the key fob, and then it rises into life, and I can pull it open. And we talked about how deep it is, but there are a couple of interesting things. So for example, there's still, like every new car, has to be a little button in case you're trapped into the trunk. You can push that button to eject yourself. Because there is, of course, <laughs> no glove box, your manuals live in this beautifully stitched leather McLaren bag with this little zipper. Pull that open. Look at that! Sports Series Handbook. The lights in this McLaren are gorgeous, but one cool thing is when I hit the lock button, I know it's locked. Look how many times it flashes the turn signal to let you know it's locked. No, that's not the camera freaking out. In real life, it does actually look like that. Here, I'll do it again. Push the lock button. There they go! They flash rapidly like eight times, just so you're sure the McLaren is locked. This McLaren has the Bowers & Wilkins premium audio system, and you definitely know when you enter the car because they printed it on the underside of the speaker, so when the door's up, you can definitely tell you're gonna be listening to some good tunes with a decent stereo. But the coolest part of this audio system is that little tweeter up on the dash that looks super aerodynamic. Pretty cool design. I love how everything in the McLaren feels so bespoke. So for example, the stock for the turn signals and the wipers are super well made and they are unique to this car. And I gotta love the way they've incorporated the mirror adjustments. It's on the right side of the steering wheel, not all that unusual, but the knob feels excellent. And to turn on and off the parking sensors, you push in and a little light illuminates around the knob itself. One thing I love about the McLaren, which is actually very thoughtful, when you leave the vehicle and turn it off, 
It'll tell you how many days you can leave the car parked before the battery will die. Of course, this is a supercar, so you're probably not gonna be driving it every day. And now I know I can leave this car parked for 36 days before the battery will run low. And one more very important feature, this McLaren has a seven speed dual clutch automatic and is only available in rear wheel drive. You know what, my, I'll give you my favorite feature and I'll give you the thing that, that kind of, I don't love about this car before we say whether you should buy it, lease it, rent it, or forget it. My favorite feature by far is the steering. The steering on this is phenomenal. It's just uh, wired right into my brain, uh, and I just want to, you know, I just want to do this all day long. It's it's so much fun to drive. And the thing I'm not in love with is, of course, the turbo lag. Right, I'm going to floor it right now, and. and you'll see how much turbo lag there is. Below 4,000, not much happens. So let me floor it, okay? Ready? One, two, three, floor it. Nothing, 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 yeah, everything! Yeah. Yeah, so, that's how it goes. So, so, you know, that's not the way most people will drive it on the track. I mean, obviously, you put it into track mode, you keep the engine on the boil, right? And then you keep it well within the turbo spool up. Uh, and it does much better, and, and Paul will determine that, but just driving it around, there is a lot of time before anything actually happens. Before, before you know, you clench your butt and go for it. There's another thing, too. This car has carbon ceramics, yep. and the, the brakes are not what you'd expect them to be. I mean, if you're being kind, they're track-focused, right? Very track-focused, yes. Yeah. So when you hit the brakes just driving around in traffic or every day, it's alarming because not much happens, yep. right? The brakes aren't hot, you haven't put them through their paces, and then you keep pushing and not much happens, and then you really push, and all of a sudden, this, Your is, yeah, this will out. stop faster than a, uh, uh, me trying to go to the gym, right? That's, that's It's amazing how it'll just stop in its tracks. Yeah, but driving it around, I gotta say, the closest thing I can compare it to is the uh, long-term smart car that we have, right? What with, does that mean? With oh, the, with the brakes? Yeah, with the regenerative braking. They're that not gonna wanna hear that. Well, you know, sometimes you gotta be brutally honest. <laughs> so if it were me, I'd probably, I don't know if that's an option, the carbon ceramics. I, I think they're standard. Are they standard? Well, yeah. then go for the carbon ceramic, by God. Yeah, but if you want- They the, are cool. If, if you want the calipers painted yellow, yeah. That is an option. You know, um, I would let Paul be the judge of the brakes, right? He's a race car driver. We're going to have this around the track, and I think that's where these things will shine. Okay, well, let's bring it back to the office and come up with a final score. See if you should buy it, lease it, rent it, or forget it. Okay. All right, well there you have it. Now the question remains, should you spend 200K plus on a vehicle that uh, everybody looks at because it does get a lot of attention? And to me, Tommy, the question isn't really, should you buy it, lease it, rent it, or forget it? The question is, does it make you feel special, right? Because people don't buy these cars because they've got a budget or they're looking to have something that fits their lifestyle, they buy it because they want a cool toy. Yep, and for that, I think you should definitely buy it because it is one heck of a car, surprisingly comfortable, goes like heck, and is actually pretty refined for a, for a low volume supercar. Yeah, I agree, and definitely buy it. It makes me feel special, and for the couple days I've had it, thank you, McLaren, uh, it's been a real treat. As always, this is Roman. And Tommy, head over to tflcar.com for the latest and greatest in new car reviews. See you guys next time, ciao.